MCAT 2017 CRAM, Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills, Passage 33, The Happy American. As you view the reading of the passage, you'll notice some highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections in order to answer the foundations of comprehension, reasoning beyond the text, and reasoning within the text questions that follow. Good luck and happy reading. Paragraph 1. Americans are a positive people. This is their reputation as well as their self-image. In the well-worn stereotype, they are upbeat, cheerful, and optimistic. Paragraph 2. Who would be churlish enough to challenge these happy features of the American personality? Take the business of positive affect which refers to the mood they display to others through their smiles, their greetings, their professions of confidence and optimism. Scientists have found that the mere act of smiling can generate positive feelings within us, at least if the smile is not forced. In addition, recent studies show that happy feelings flit easily through social networks so that one person's good fortune can brighten the day even for only distantly connected others. Furthermore, psychologists agree that positive feelings can actually lengthen our lives and improve our health. People who report having positive feelings are more likely to participate in a rich social life and social connectedness turns out to be an important defense against depression, which is a known factor for many physical illnesses. Paragraph three. It is a sign of progress then that economists have begun to show an interest in using happiness rather than just the gross national product as a measure of an economy's success. Happiness is, of course, a slippery thing to measure or define. Philosophers have debated what it is for centuries and even if they were to define it simply as a greater frequency of positive feelings than negative ones, when they ask people if they are happy, they are, they are asking them to arrive at some sort of average over many moods and moments. Paragraph 4. Surprisingly, when psychologists measure the relative happiness of nations, they routinely find that Americans are not, even in prosperous times, and despite their vaunted, vaunted meaning boast about or praise something especially excessively, their vaunted positivity, very happy at all. A recent meta-analysis of over 100 studies of self-reported happiness worldwide found Americans ranking only 23rd. Americans account for two-thirds of the global market for antidepressants, which happen also to be the most commonly prescribed drug in the United States. Paragraph 5. How can Americans be so surpassingly positive in self-image and stereotype without being the world's happiest and best-off people? The answer is that positivity is not so much their condition as it is part of their ideology, the way they explain the world and think they ought to function within it. That ideology is positive thinking, by which they usually mean two things. One is the generic content of positive thinking, that is, the positive thought itself, which can be summarized as, things are pretty good right now, at least if you're willing to see silver linings, make lemonade out of lemons, etc. And things are going to get a whole lot better. Wow. Paragraph 6. The second thing they mean by positive thinking is this practice of trying to think in a positive way. That sounds pretty redundant. 
there is, they are told, a practical reason for undertaking this effort. Positive thinking supposedly not only makes us feel optimistic, but actually makes happy outcomes more likely. How can the mere process of thinking do this? In the rational explanation that many psychologists would offer today, optimism improves health, personal efficacy, confidence, and resilience. Making it easier for us to accomplish our goals, a far less rational theory also runs rampant in American ideology, the idea that our thoughts can, in some mysterious way, directly affect the physical world. Negative thoughts somehow produce negative outcomes, while positive thoughts realize themselves in the form of health, prosperity, and success. For both rational and mystical reasons, then, the effort of positive thinking is said to be well worth our time and, and attention. All right. According to the passage, positive feelings are A, universal, B, hereditary, C, contagious, or D, ephemeral. Ephemeral means lasting a very short time. I'll give you a moment to think. So the correct answer choice is contagious. This is a Foundations of Comprehension question, which means that it wants you to understand the central theme of the passage and be able to figure out what specific words or phrases mean within that context. The passage doesn't um, describe positive feelings as being universal. Answer choice A is incorrect. In fact, it discusses individual differences in the amount of positive feelings that people report, which suggests that they're not ubiquitous. All right. As for answer choice B, the passage doesn't discuss positive feelings being um, hereditary. Rather, the author writes that positive affect, which includes the way that a person's mood is displayed to others, can affect members of a group. He writes that, quote, happy feelings flit. Flit meaning move lightly and swiftly. So flits easily through social networks so that one person's good fortune can brighten the day for only distantly connected others. Okay, you can find this mentioned in paragraph two and this movement of positive feelings from one individual to another individual means that positive feelings are obviously contagious. The passage does not describe positive feelings as being ephemeral, although they might be. The passage doesn't talk about that. So according to this passage, positive feelings are contagious. What best represents the author's explanation for why Americans can be so surpassingly positive in self-image and stereotype without being the world's happiest and best off people. A, Americans' positivity is not a true reflection of their affect. B, being well off is not the same thing as being happy. Um, or C, stereotypes tend to be unwarranted generalizations. Or D, Americans tend to have high rates of depression. I'll give you a moment to think. Okay, so again, this is a foundations of comprehension question, and you have to figure out what this specific phrase means um, within the context of the central idea of the passage. A main theme of this passage is that positivity is a part of an American ideology that governs how they think they should act and not an expression of their condition or true effective state as stated in the second sentence of um, paragraph five. Quote, positivity is not so much their condition as it is a part of their ideology. So obviously the correct answer choice is going to be answer choice A. Um, the passage doesn't explore 
the concept of how being well off relates to happiness, although I'm sure I, you know, I don't find poor people happier. Uh, that could be argued. Although some stereotypes can be unwarranted generalizations, this is not a de concept described in the passage, so that's why answer choice C is incorrect. And, um... Finally, in paragraph four, the passage discusses higher rates of the use of antidepressants in the United States, but this is offered as evidence for relative happiness of Americans, not as an explanation for how Americans can be so surpassingly positive in self-image and stereotype without being the world's happiest and best off people. Okay, that's why answer choice D is wrong. Um, a is your answer. Let's keep it moving. Suppose economists do use happiness instead of the gross national product as a measure of success. According to the passage, one, the transition will be fraught with difficulty. Two, the gross um, national product of the United States will appear to decrease. For three, the economy of the United States will be seen as relatively less successful than today's. So is it A, one only, B, two only, or C, one and three only? You decide. Select all that apply. All right. So the correct answer is one only, and obviously this is a reasoning beyond a text question where you have to um, apply the ideas mentioned in the passage to the new situation presented here in the um, question stem. The passage states that, quote, happiness is of course a slippery thing to measure. You can find this in paragraph three. Um, this implies that the transition of to this metric will be fraught with difficulty, fraught meaning of a situation or course of action filled with or destined to result in something, specifically something undesirable, okay? So statement one is correct. The others, not so much. Um, when, a nas when national happiness has been measured compared to other countries, the United States has not ranked particularly well. And to this end, the author notes, quote, a recent meta-analysis of over 100 studies of self-reported happiness worldwide found Americans ranking only 23rd. That's in paragraph four. So to corroborate, corroborate meaning confirm or give support to. So to corroborate this finding, the author brings up the widespread usage, usage of antidepressants. However, there's no explicit mention of the U.S. economy being successful when evaluating gross national product. Since this is not explicitly a part of the passage, there's no basis for comparison um, for statement three. The hypothetical suggestion uh, to use happiness instead of GNP as a measure of the economy makes no prediction about what will happen to GNP, okay? So yeah, these two are just too difficult to ascertain. The only one that we can easily um, support is statement one. That's why A is the correct answer choice.